Okay, so we've just managed to get the tracker here working as a camera in an Unreal Engine. Uh, if I put this tracker on the camera, and you can then get a view of actually what we're doing. So I'll put this on. So what you were watching there was real-time computer graphics and we were using one of these trackers as our virtual camera. Now Anthony here is going to show you actually how to set up our tracker with this new tracker that we've uh, just got. So I'll uh, hand you over to Anthony. So today we'll be showing you how to connect this to the Unreal Engine. So to start off, I already have my Steam VR turned on. I have everything set up and it's all in here and loaded already. What we're going to do is we're going to open our Unreal Engine. And so there's a few things while this loads that we need to apply before we can actually start doing anything. I'm going to create a brand new blank project. I'm just going to call this one virtual set. I'm going to leave these settings as blank. Create project. Now that Unreal Engine has loaded, we need to add in a plugin. So we come up into the settings and come down to the plugins window. Now we need to search for VRPN. And this will give us the option for the Live Link VRPN. So we just simply enable this and it will give us a warning, but that's okay. We press yes and we restart the engine for the plugin to take effect. Unreal Engine has restarted. We can close down this plugins window now. Now we need to come up into the settings at the top, click on window, and make sure that we have this live link window active. I've put mine down here at the bottom, and this is how we're going to get the information from the tracker puck. Now we also have an attachment with a few files. So these files, I've got mine located on my computer just here. You can have them anywhere on your computer as long as you know where they are. Now inside here are going to have some files that will help us read the information coming from our Steam VR setup. So the first thing we're going to do is come into the Open VR file, and this is the one we need to run. This other one will run in the background while this is open. So this creates a little file that tells us that our trackers are being registered and that they are on. So this is helpful because we can get our unique identifier for each tracker. Every single tracker has a completely unique code and location. So we can see that I have my tracker puck and that signal's coming through okay. And we also have my head mount display and the signal is coming through, which means they are both being tracked. Now this information I am going to add, I'm gonna copy this. And we make sure that there is no white on here. If anything on here is selected, it's no longer updating and we're not getting a steady signal. So we need to make sure that we get rid of that. Easy way of getting rid of it is just copy and now it's updating again. What I have done is created a little notepad where I can keep all my tracker information and I can just Simply paste in the tracker information here, and then I have everything accessible and I don't have to click in here and potentially freeze it up. So from here, I can copy my tracker information, and this houses all the information that I will need to run various aspects of virtual production. But for now, we'll just be focusing on the Live Link VRPN information. We also need to open a second file from the download. So we come back into the main folder and we need to come into the VRPN print command folder. Now some of these files will be used later on, but for now we're just going to be using this VRPN server. We need to make sure that it is on. It will look blank, but it is working in the background. So we can simply minimize both of these now. 
And what I've done is if we open these up, if I close these two down, what I've done is I have pinned them to my taskbar so I can turn them both on very easily. And this just makes my workflow a lot easier to do this. Just right click on a file. And currently it's pinned, so my option is unpin. But I can choose to pin it onto the taskbar and place it where I'd like it. And then turn these two on here. I can close that folder down and just minimize these and this one. Now that we're back in Unreal Engine, I need to come down to the source panel and create a new live link source. The IP address needs to be whatever computer is running your Steam VR from. My own computer, the one I'm working on now, is running it. So I can type in local host and a port number. Now this port number is standard across the board. So everyone needs to type in 3884. And this is telling the computer where on the computer, what file to access, etc. Now, if you're connecting to a, another computer on your network, you need to type in your full IP address instead of local host. But for me, it's quite simple. Now I know that my rate, my update rate is in 90 Hertz and that is Within the Steam VR settings, you can go through and find out what your specific tracker, but for Vive trackers, it's 90 Hertz. I need to add that in here. Device name. This is the unique identifier that we copied from the VRPN server. So that there. We need to make sure it is the same one. Otherwise, we're not going to be tracking the correct tracker. Now, this is our second tracker. So I'm going to call it tracker2. And we also need to tell it that it is a tracker and not any other source of input. We can add that. Great. So it is connected. This green dot here means that we have connection. It'll go away if this is not working. So if this is closed, you can see it is now yellow. But if we simply open it back up, we now have connection and it is again green. Now we can create a cinema camera within the Unreal. Just click and drag this into our scene, anywhere is fine. And we come over to the right here on our details panel. Add a component and called Live Link Controller. And we can leave it named as is. Within the Live Link options, we come down to the subject. So this is our tracker two, which is connected over here. If we connect more, the different options will be over in this side, but we want tracker two. And we need to tell it that it is a transform role, as in transforming in physical space. Now you can instantly see that our camera has disappeared. It is actually just below the surface over here. Now to fix this, we need to change some pre-processes, because currently the information coming is not aligned with our tracker. So we need to add a pre-process for transform axis. Open this one up. Now we need to tell it that the front axis is a negative Z, that our right axis is X and our up axis is Y. Now you can see that our camera is in our scene my tracker puck, you can see that left and right works, up and down, forward, backwards, rotate, tilt, and moving side to side, you can see all of those rotations and move are working correctly. Before you go any further, we also need to come down into this transform role the live link setting and check world transform. This makes sure that if we have any other windows open that it continues to track and this can cause issues later on. So make sure that this is checked. If you want to add more than one tracker at once, we can come into our VRPN. We can copy a second ID. onto the side here and type in 
the same information and type in the new device ID as our head mount. We can also type in the subject mount name as head mount and tell it that it is a tracker. Press add. We now have two trackers working in the same scene and the setup is exactly the same. To add in a second one, come over to add component, live link controller. In the subject, we can now see head mount is available and as a transform role. We also need to make sure that we add the pre-process and align it as negative Z, X, and Y. And now we have two cameras in our scene tracked at once. We also need to make sure that we press the presets panel and save this as a preset. We can call this our virtual virtual set. And now if for any reason we lose these, or if you open the scene and they're not there, you can come to your presets and load it here. But when the preset is saved, it will load automatically and you won't have to do this setup again in this project. Well, I hope that you found this information helpful to get some tracking into Unreal Engine from the Steam VR. Next episode, we're going to talk about how to offset our tracker with our camera. And this will help us get rid of any variations within our tracking and create a smoother process overall. And we'll see you in the next episode.